So these tiny pencil sketches and watercolours were made almost two centuries ago, but even now they still really vividly bring to life one of the most famous voyages in the world, and arguably the most famous voyage in the history of science. They were made by an artist named Conrad Martins between the summer of 1833 and the very early months of 1835, and they catch a 19th century life during his time in South America with a 10-gun Royal Navy ship called HMS Beagle. And on board alongside Fitzroy, the captain, and Martins, while he made these sketches, was a young recent graduate from Cambridge University, a 22-year-old naturalist called Charles Darwin. So in Cambridge University Library, we have two sketchbooks that Martins kept during this period. The first one starting just shortly before he heard that the Beagle was looking for another artist. Martin spent some time in Montevideo just sketching everything that he saw. And there were these wonderful sketches of just street life in Montevideo in August 1833. There are scenes of just cannon lying in the streets. This is a dangerous time. This is a very dangerous part of the world to be in. Some of the sketches show how quickly Martin's had to work. This one in particular, I think, is very interesting two people in local dress, two gauchos, and a couple of very rapidly sketched horses. But it actually has little notes to remind Martins of what it was that he was looking at. And underneath the horses, it says dead horse and pool of blood. So this is the first sketch that we have after Martins actually joined the Beagle crew. It's made in December 1833, and it says it's from the anchorage of HMS Beagle. And it's a beautifully detailed sketch, a double page spread. I, I can't imagine how it would be possible to, to, to draw anything in, in more perfect. But each of these pages is only 14 by 20 centimetres. It's wonderful now, I think, that everyone has the opportunity to flick through these sketchbooks in their virtual representation on the Cambridge Digital Library and to follow the journey as Martins and Darwin actually saw it unfold. And this is a wonderful picture to have because this is Christmas Day, 1833, and the Beagle crew had obviously been given a bit of a holiday. So being very young men, they're messing around on the shore, playing a game which, according to Martin's notes, is called slinging the monkey. Uh, I don't think monkeys were involved. I think this is definitely just the, probably the youngest members of the crew. By the end of January in 1834, the Beagle had reached Tierra del Fuego. And this is an unusual drawing. It's one very few that Martin's made of close-ups of the native peoples. These are Patagonian Indians in Gregory's Bay. The sketches give a real sense of what a hard and difficult journey this must have been. This was uncharted territory. Martins didn't have much time to make these sketches and wrote himself a lot of notes on them about the, the, the colours and the textures and the geology. Right in the distance in this sketch, you can see Mount Osorno, a volcano. This erupted uh, while the Beagle was close by. And it was very significant for Darwin's scientific work because Fitzroy, who'd been taking soundings, of course, was able to show that the volcanic eruption and the, the earthquake and the tidal wave that followed that perceptibly raised the level of the land against the sea. So in August 1834, the Beagle and the Adventure arrived in Valparaiso in Chile. But by this stage, Fitzroy was finding it difficult to, uh, to, to maintain the cost of both ships. That meant amalgamating the two crews, and there was no longer room for Martins, who left the ship. So Martins had to make his own way uh, from that point, but he followed the same route that the Beagle followed um, almost a year later. So he was still sketching the same places that Fitzroy and Darwin saw. Uh, in particular, the Pacific Islands of Tahiti, very different landscapes and several sketches of plants there. Presumably these were very, uh, un very alien to Martins. He hadn't encountered them before and he wanted to remember what they looked like. He also made himself this list, a vocabulary list, 
of uh, the local language. Darwin described the Beagle Voyage as the most formative experience of his life. And to see it through the eyes of one of his companions is a very vivid reminder of the reality of that journey. Martin's sketches are a visual counterpart to Darwin's letters home. Both bring to life a really remarkable adventure, the different landscapes, the lives of the local people and of the crew of these two tiny ships in a vast and remote part of the world. <laughs>